Hello, um, it's uh, <clears throat> 19 minutes past 12 on the 16th of July 2024. So here we are, we're going to try something and see if it all works. So this is the Fairlight Series 3 CMI, Computer Music Instrument. This particular one is CPU uh, number 069, which belongs to me, Roger, and I worked with Psycho Systems, and then I was the audio product specialist for Europe for Fairlight, working under Kim Ryrie. I never actually met Peter Vogel until 2011. Anyway, so here we have um, a version of uh, Heard It on the Grapevine. So if I load it, um, this is the system file, so you can have up to 16 different if you like, MIDI channels and then into each instrument, that's an instrument, a MIDI channel equals an instrument, you can load a voice or more than one voice and each voice can have up to 128 sub-voices. So to quickly do the mathematics for you, this system which has 16 independent outputs which all have their own um, <clears throat> Uh, bespoke hardware, the stereo voice card, so each stereo card has a stereo output, so there are actually eight stereo in, uh, stereo outputs. Um, so that's 16 voices, but they can run in mono. So it's loaded the system. Let's just have a quick look. I'm going to load in the sequence file, like that. So there's always a sequencer file, and it's loaded that. Now let's just go and have a look at the lineup of what we've got. So, here we've got the outputs, the audio outputs, where each of these sounds can be routed, uh, which you can change the number of polyphony here. You can see here this is the piano, which is instrument 6, if you like MIDI channel 6, and it's got a Wurlitzer lid B1, so it looks like that was recorded in, uh, yeah, with a, as a, a Wurlitzer, but um, the microphone was somewhere near the lid. Maybe the lid was open or down. Whoever uh, sampled that will probably know. These uh, first sounds are actually library sounds. So I can um, go and click on that sound, which is saying that it's not loaded at the moment. Um, there's all the MIDI controls, and it says it hasn't been able to find it. So if I go back up to the directory page, it can search for that sound in amongst thousands and thousands of sounds here on this particular machine. This machine is running off uh, not internal hard drives, although it has got two internal hard drives, <coughs> which are not fixed up, and two external hard drives. Um, this is running on uh, an amazing little event invention, uh, which Peter J. Wilk had something to do with, and the various other people and it is a mini or micro SD card so the whole system is running off a 4 gigabyte uh, partition uh, one of four partitions so this is the original Fairlight sound library you can see there's just pages and pages of it these sounds have been used on so many hit records um, well we reckon 40 percent of every hit record made out of America, UK and Europe between 19 85 and 1990 used the Fairlight. That's quite extraordinary, isn't it? So I've gone to change directory, so I like to keep my sound separate with the different projects I do. And let's just do voice load, and it will, yes, it's found the sound. So this keyboard typewriter here has got a microprocessor inside it, so I can pre queue sounds, or instructions rather, while it's. Um, uh, gone to find the sounds and loading them. So I pre queued it to find and search for uh, five different voice files, each of which could have 128 sub voices or samples. And it seems to have done it. Now I can go to the sequencer page, which I've already loaded. The sequencer is based on page R which was written by Michael Carlos in about 78, 79, we're not, 1978, 1979, we're not quite sure what the date is because we won't be able to speak to, to Michael for a while. And here is <coughs> the MIDI data, here's a pattern page, so each pattern can be 
up to 8 beats or 5-8 bar or 3-8 bar and then the sequencer itself has uh, 255 of these patterns if you like a bar patterns we call them because you can reorder the bars and patterns in any order at any point with any number of repetitions at any point um, to make up a song so this song if I go show T T's got nothing in it but there's nothing stopping me from putting you know bars 25 61 1 and two copies of 2 in there and this is how it's incredibly easy, or it was incredibly easy, to create 12 inch mixes and dance mixes using it because it's so completely non linear. So, before I go any further, I'm going to actually copy this file because this is an original file. I've got backups of backups of backups of backups. But just for this little demonstration, which I'm hoping won't last more than 10 minutes, uh, I, if I go back to where the original. Um, uh, file is it's in here so let's open that remember the command yeah let's thinking about it and it's going to load all the pages there we go so what we want to do is we want to come up here and we want to copy this sound so this sequence so it's a one two three four five six seven it is F key number seven all the icons relate to these fifteen uh, function keys along here and if you hit shift they roll over and have a different function and if you hit, hit control they have another function and if you hit escape they have another function so each of these F keys has four functions just with one flick of the left hand which is amazing. Name of the file copy so let's just call it um, grape vine uh, it is the seventh of the seventh month of 24 so it's just going to make a copy of that thank you very much when this flickers the little red icon here it means that the hard drive is actually in activity I was very careful I closed the RS file before I did this so it's just making a copy so while well, it's just make that let me just have a pause and get my breath back oh no it's done it Okay, so now I can load in. This is a copy now of that sequence. And I'm just opening up here um, a way of us hearing it. So I've just gone to Cubase. While I can do that, I can get the RS page running. Um, so I'm just putting in here a stereo input on a stereo thing, which is this. Is. I'll get the author of it, but I won't mention his name. Uh, because I've signed an NBA. So now we should have an input for the machine. So let's solo track A and hit play. Yep, we've got a kick drum. Great. And now solo B. Great. There's nothing on C at the moment. Let's what's ha see what's happening on D. That sounds like it. Now, we've got to work out what these other sounds are. So, on down on track P, this looks like something that's on a backbeat here. If I just like that up. You see that looks like a, a backbeat thing. We have a slight push there. So... I'll just spin through the sounds and see what you've got. Here's a scream sound. I don't think it's that. So seven set. So I could just change the instrument that it's triggering. No, that's not that. Let's try number nine because that looks like rock drop set. That's, uh, that's not right. Okay, so the piano F I know is definitely going to be these ones here because it looks like a chord there. So. I could do set instrument, which is an instant command. Um, let me just do that. Let me start. Set instrument. So when I do set instrument, it will take the lineup of whatever sequence we've got of 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 these different sounds and the empath the, the empathy, the enthony, which just means the polyphony. That's all the outputs. And now it's going to match up these audio outputs automatically to the sequencer inputs. 
So the command for that is set instrument, which will do that. And there we go. So if I take the solo key off, and I'm just trying to get the piano. Uh, I, J, K. This should be the piano. Let's have a look. And it's Al as well. I think. There's a piano. That should be five. Okay, so this is not that. That's five. Sorry, I'm just, this is just intuition of having used um, the Fairlight for quite some years. Right, I think that's the correct. Now, what's F? <laughs> Let's just take the solo key off and see what happens. <laughs> well, that was very quick, wasn't it? Obviously, the flute's not right, so let me just mute. So there should be a bass. It's there. Yeah, and now you can see the song. Oh, let's just start again. So what you can do, let's go to D. No what they haven't named what it is, but whoops. That sounds very bizarre, doesn't it? You'll notice I've got the clock running here, and that's because I've looped the sample output into the input so I can have a real-time display of what the symmetry is doing. And you can see the sequence will run at the same time. Uh, I can start and stop. Um, the sequencer from any page and I can go to wave edit page and start editing sounds so for example I could go to the sound uh, look at the snare drum uh, uh, where's Jill I can patch on so we can actually see that one so it's one two three four five six seven eight Let's just see which snare drum that is. I'm going to assume it's two. That one in the middle. Goes to the wave edit. I can just reverse that snare drum in real time. It isn't that one. Wow, that's really cool. Let's reverse the snare drum. It's not that one. Reverse it back. So voice three, reverse it. Just trying to find the snare drum. So it doesn't make much sense really. But um, we had to work very fast in the old days, so it's not that one. So voice three. Let's just reverse that. Yeah, found it. So it's this snare drum. So we can actually edit while it's going on. Sorry about the flute. So the voice could start here. Grab the voice marker. Sorry, put it down here. Let me just go back. So that's a temporary edit. Let's just mute that. Let me just solo the first few things A, B, C, D, E. So we've got a random sound in there, that's great. So I can easily sort that out and. Um, or I could load any different sound in or different snare drum. I have a massive library. Um, I just haven't fiddled with the outputs yet, which is why it's not sounding particularly brilliant at the moment. So that's how to reconstitute a Fairlight Series 3 sound, a uh, 3 sequence using a system file which loads up to 16 MIDI instruments called instruments. And in each one of those, you can have um, up to uh, you know, they can have a voice. A voice can have up to 128 samples. So if we have a look at some of these other ones, well, I'll leave it for now. I think you get the idea. It's quite a lot to take in. So if you're a Fairlight programmer, you had to be able to cover yourself and keep talking while you had the client in the room because sometimes some of the operations took a bit of time. So you just keep jokes going, keep the banter going, and just make everybody feel happy, obviously trying to make musical decisions at the same time. What I could do here, for example, is I could replace, um, if I could do, I could do voice load this, or I could just load that sound. This is the famous R sound, uh, which was sampled by Tom Stewart. Right, click. 
bass drums got me for that. Where's that? That, that was just to meet that. Uh, this should be the R sound instead of the piano sound. Let me look. Yeah. There we are. So you could just load in any sound as it's going around. So what sound do you want to hear? Here's a sound called banjo. So we just load in banjo. It'll just temporarily block the audio. Here we are, banjo. So we can put baritone in. Just while it's going. Simple, isn't it? Well, we were paid to make it look simple. So we were paid in the old day £500 a day. That was the agreed amount for a fair light hire with a programmer. Because without a programmer, it was quite difficult to understand what was going on because you really had to know it inside out. Most of, the co most of the commands weren't actually in the manual. So I've got this command summary, which was from a previous version of software 5.4, but there's 9.34. So these got some of the commands, but not all of them. So, yeah, programmers were... Uh, paid uh, 500 pounds in 85, 86, 87, 88. 500 pounds per day. So, including inflation today, that is the equivalent of 1,682 pounds a day. 1,682 pounds a day for a Fairlight. So, uh, and a programmer who would then put together all your complete backing track for the very first time in a DAW which had the sampling facility so I could just go to the sample page create a new sample while that's playing um, so good morning good morning so I could just create a new sample while it's going on I could actually sample itself back into itself so I could put in like 20 seconds or something and loop something and then in real time while the sequence is still playing I could go and edit the sound uh, I could use things like um, all these pages, uh, where you edit, there's a flanger page, there's a mix page where you can actually mix um, different samples together. It's actually really cool because you can do, um, uh, let's just go back there. You can do things like uh, cross modulation, and that's a wave edit page. Where am I trying to get? Mix page, and it's one of the pages I help to design with um, Ben, I think. No, Andrew, Andrew Bettison. So there we are. There's a little bit of the Fairlight, and uh, I made it look so easy, didn't I? <laughs> I've only just woken up, I need a cup of coffee. Anyway, there's an overview of how you match up uh, system files, voice files, sub-voices with an RS file in the Fairlight Series 3. do do Hope you enjoyed it. See you again soon. My name's Roger. Bye. Cut.